Things were so much easier when we could be in two places at once. When we dance around. Um, my name is Patrick Carroll, and I'm from Traverse City, Michigan. I was born in Traverse City, Michigan. I've lived there my whole life, with the exception of uh, the years that I've lived in Kalamazoo. Uh, I go to Western Michigan University, and I am a big fan of music. Remix. I'm not trying to be rude, hey, pretty girl, I'm being you. At two months, I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, which is like a very serious uh, health condition. I mean, it's a it's called a childhood disease because it, not many adults have it because they mostly die before they reach adulthood. So growing up, I always knew I would always have issues with my health and. Um, was affected my life. It didn't actually interfere with a normal life until a few years ago. I think that year, my junior year of high school, I went to the hospital like two or three times for like like what's called a clean out, and it's basically just like being pumped full of antibiotics until you're better. And then like, you know, for a couple years I was still okay, but my like, my performance in like these tests that I would have, because I would get checkups in Cleveland every three months. Um, Cleveland is like a specializes in the disease and so I've been going there for every three months since I was two months old so at these checkups my test performances would get lower and lower and lower and even though I didn't really feel sick um, like it was clear that like walking up hills was getting harder and um, yeah just like my lung performance was not very good and it got to a point when they, where they were like, well, you know, it's, we've pretty much tried everything. And if, like, we're going to try this one more medication, and if that doesn't work, then, like, I don't know what's going to happen. And that just made me feel, like, worse than I ever had. Like, I would, my skin was, like, really pale, and my mouth is really dry, and I just, like, feel nauseous all the time. It's, like, this really powerful drug. I was pretty sick at that point. Like I could barely make it to class without like having to pull over, or, like throw up, or like I was in pretty rough shape. But I was still trying to go through all my classes and do everything. When I got to the hospital, I was so bad. Like my the oxygen level to my brain was like like sixty something percent, which is like climbing Everest. It's like that's what what it drops to, and you start like getting delirious and like your like organs start to like not function but me I was like going to class I wasn't even aware that it was that bad and uh, they were like this is like this is really serious and um, like we're gonna keep you here for a while and we're gonna put you on oxygen and it got to a point where like I was just on oxygen 24 hours a day and I couldn't, I couldn't be without it. Like I would, I couldn't be without it for more than five minutes. Like I couldn't shower. I'd have to wear it in the shower. And um, so then I, re then, um, you know, after about two weeks, they were like, this is, this is not getting better. And uh, I think the only, the only option left, like is that you'll, you're gonna need a lung transplant. At first they told me that the wait time is usually like two, three months max. Basically I was back and forth between Traverse City, my parents' house, 
in the hospital for about nine months. And um, so it got to a point where it was like, okay, like you guys said it was going to be three months and it's, you know, it's been nine months. And I just like, if I'm not going to get it after nine months, I'm never going to get it. And it, like, I was so sick that, you know, if it had been maybe another week or two, I would have just been like dead or, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what would happen, but it was, it was really bad. And then in September of 2007, I got the call that I was supposed to come down. They found a donor for me, good match, and they sent a plane to the airport, and within like an hour, I was on a plane, and within another hour and a half, I was in surgery. And then eight hours later, I woke up in the uh, intensive care unit with um, a big, probably like three inch wide tube all down my throat going into my lungs. Singing actually I found to be just really like, I really love singing. Like I just, I love, I don't know, just the feeling, like the physical, action of singing it's a very cool feeling to like hear something that you wrote and be like wow like I thought of that it's I guess I just I like the process of creating something and um, creating something that like you enjoy listening to even though I would say that in a long enough time span I end up not enjoying anything that I've created in the past but when you first write like a new song and you're really you know excited about it there's like not many better feelings than I don't know it's like you just like thought of this out of thin air and now it's a song this this band Tanuki Suit we uh we formed I think in the summer after 8th grade uh my friend Will and Andrew and I two guitars and drums trying to do something different, I guess, that around town. And um, we were young. So I think we, we left something behind just because we were there. We existed. I mean, and I think Pat was a big part of that with just his drive to do it and keeping, keeping it all together. And there's a huge metal movement. And that's all anyone in Traverse City cared about was metal bands. And um, I'm not even sure what kind of music we played back then, but it was far from metal. Our parents would drop us off, you know, would drop us off with our equipment because we couldn't even drive yet, playing these shows with these like well-established metal bands. And um, we played enough shows that we won over enough people and a lot of kids started coming out to see us. It didn't hurt that like, there were probably many girls in love with Colin Campbell at the time. <laughs> like, my dream job would be, like, just to make enough money to where, like, I could live and then, like, our band could play and make CDs. I don't really want to grow up and be a rock star or anything, but it'd definitely be nice to be on, like, a, like a small record label or, I don't know, just have... Uh, following of fans. <laughs> They're hot. Yeah. They're real hot. They're all real hot. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the, uh, the bassist. <laughs> Colin Campbell. Colin Campbell. The hottest of them all. 
No, I like the lead singer. A lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. So it's, I'm just someone that has to be playing music. So good night. Um, I just kind of tapped into like the the part of me that likes you know softer uh, you know melodic vocal singer songwriter type stuff whatever you want to call it. So it start like the first the first music project that I worked on outside of you know post Nuki Soon was just me in my dorm room playing guitar and singing and. Uh, I try to get away without like writing lyrics about it, and I mean, I, you really can't. Like I, I have written songs or just lines of songs that deal with it. It, it literally was like my entire life was just taken away from me in nine months, and then given back within another nine months, which is kind of it makes you look at things a little differently, and it makes. You Sometimes I guess I forget that uh, just what Pat has lived through is probably more than I'll ever live through. And so sometimes I can take that for granted. But uh, Pat's always been a real positive person, and uh, so even even in the worst of everything, it's pretty incredible. His attitude. Like, the disease has affected just my attitude about life in general uh, a lot, you know, and before, before the whole transplant thing even. Um, I think I'm really quick to like love people and it's probably a sense of like urgency that like I don't know how much time I have and if I feel a certain way about someone or something I just go with it and I'm very like very passionate about stuff like that like I'm there's a I have a lot of passion for life and people special especially um and like it might even be a weird anatomical thing where like um like part of my disease is that my heart even beats faster than normally and um, like obviously that really doesn't have any connection with emotions really, but it feels kind of symbolic is that it, in a way that it feels symbolic in the way that like I when I love someone, I really love someone or when I love something, I really love it and uh, it's just like every Everything is like accelerated for me, and every, everything is more intense. You know, when you, when you lose everything and then you get it all back, it's like you get it back tenfold, you know. That's probably the only song I've written that's pretty obviously about one thing or one of a few, and that's uh, about Cleveland. Uh, it took me probably two months to write, but I think I said most of what I feel about that town in the song. And overall, you know, like, whatever, whatever has, has happened to me in my life, Whatever bad things have happened, like you can't be afraid, and um, you have to think that things are gonna be okay. Otherwise, you know, why live? Don't be afraid. You got your whole life ahead of you.
You got